When we met you at the polling station on Saturday, you were convinced that the opposition would win. You said, tonight victory will be ours, our dreams will come true. What happened? I was right. We won the elections. The opposition, when I say we, it's not the opposition, it's the pro-European forces won the elections. The fact that they were stolen is a different story. <laughs> The uh, electronic equipment that was for the first time used in elections in Georgia was used to uh, reproduce votes with one ID. You could vote uh, 15, 17, 20 times, and that is being documented in many manners. Uh, what, what evidence do you have of this? There are evidences. It's not me, uh, okay. but I've been shown uh, the evidence. International election observers have criticized the election. They said they witnessed cases of double voting, ballot box stuffing of Im intimidation and the like, but they didn't condemn the election. They didn't say this election had been rigged. And that's a problem for you, isn't it? No, it's not a problem because the International Observer Mission never condemn uh, elections two days after the election. Uh, they have to have still their final uh, uh, judgment on the election. Really, the observation is done more by locals than by these international okay. uh, observers that travel through the country, and it's very difficult for them to uh, really reach to the depths. We ourselves were surprised and did not understand, so it's difficult to imagine that outsiders that do not know the country could. But you, that's you, are you are convinced by the evidence that you have seen that this election I'd, has been If I had rigged. not been convinced, I would not have announced that these elections are not legitimate, that they have been stolen for the, from the Georgian people. Very interesting to see that the only places where the election was free, limited, because people were not allowed to uh, vote in mass, but where they were free, that is in our diaspora, 90% uh, of the voters gave uh, their votes to the pro-European choice. Leading figures in the opposition have described the election as a Russian special operation, planned in Moscow, executed by Ivanishvili, the leader of Georgian Dream. Do you agree with that? Yes. Uh, I think, I don't know whether it was planned in Moscow, but the methodology, the sophistication, uh, the extent, the fact that in different places of the country, different methods were used in parallel, uh, all of that is a very good organization. It's not something that was just done, uh, I tried to fraud here and there. It was very well planned in advance, organized. I think they were supposed, it is the mark of, uh, the signature of uh, FSB and that type of organizations. What is very interesting also is that the propaganda that we have seen in the previous uh, weeks, uh, the uh, electoral propaganda of the uh, Georgian dream, was a copy, uh, copy-paste of Russian propaganda videos, posters. Uh, we might have seen those on that put mm -hmm. uh, in parallel Ukrainian tragedy and Georgian prosperity or uh, that's, uh, we have seen those that remember Soviet posters of the old times that were doing that. And more recently, there was one video that was posted last week uh, that was a copy uh, of a video that was uh, used in uh, the Putin campaign. Okay. I mean, it's a strong accusation to make. I mean, uh, some people in this country are going to say the real problem here is that the opposition, including yourself, are I'm refusing not, to are refusing to accept the verdict I'm not of included the included in the opposition. Okay, but the opposition are refusing to accept the verdict of the election. The problem here is that they don't accept the result because it went well, against. Well, as them. I said, there are so many uh, elements that show where is the will of the Georgian population. It was shown on the streets last March, April. Uh, those hundreds of thousands of people, where have they disappeared? They didn't vote. No, those are the people that instead of leaving the country, young people, stayed. Those are the young people that said, we'll stay for the elections, it's our last chance and we'll take it. I don't know what will happen to them uh, now. So what now? You've called for protests. A protest has, is planned for this evening. What are you trying to achieve with this? Are you seeking to unseat the government? 
through these protests? I'm not there revolt? to unseat or seat anyone. Uh, I have uh, made a judgment on the elections, and I think that those people that have to confirm this judgment, because I'm the only independent institution in the country that is left, those that have to confirm it are the people, uh, and I think that will be the meaning of this, not protest, but expression. There is no other place uh, where the people in this country can now express uh, their uh, votes and their will to stay on the European path. Now then, uh, the choice will be, either we will move into the uh, program of the ruling majority, which is to arrest uh, all the opposition leaders, to impeach the president, uh, to start uh, also actions against the civil society according to the Russian law that has not been rescinded, uh, start actions against the free media. So we'll move to a different uh, type of regime, uh, nothing European but more Russian-like, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, we'll go back to the European past through, I don't know, maybe that will be new elections, uh, that will be asked by the political parties. It's up for them to decide on the, on the strategy. I think today it will be just a very peaceful demonstration of what the population feels towards this uh, stealing of elections. But power has passed, you're saying, to the people to legitimize these elections or not. The That's how it happens in every country. But the danger is that these protests are suppressed potentially violently, that people could get hurt? Well, people will get hurt. Uh, what I've described, the promises of the uh, ruling majority, the very strange electoral campaign that they had, which was not an electoral campaign to seduce, but was an electoral campaign to uh, threaten, uh, those uh, threats will uh, be put into, there won't be any freedoms left in this country. As I said, I am today, and that was one of the issues with the elections, I'm the only independent uh, institution in the country. Uh, so it's, it's a very dire uh, situation for the country uh, in general. I don't think that the protests today will be anything but peaceful. Mm. I don't think that the confrontation will come from that. But if tomorrow the arrests start, then I don't know what would be the reaction of the population. Do you think that we are standing at the edge or a, of a period of great uncertainty, of great instability in this country? Instability in this country can come only if the people are repressed, if their freedoms are suppressed, if their right to go in the direction that they want is suppressed. What would you like Brussels, Washington, London to do? Are you expecting anything from I think from that them? they uh, have to support the uh, European loving population and not uh, a majority, <laughs> a ruling party uh, that wants to continue one party rule in this country that is going to look more and more uh, Russian. I believe you have a few months left in your presidency. Not even. Not even. They could be a, a turbulent and and potentially traumatic uh, last few days, did you expect it to end like this? Certainly not. And I hope it won't. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.